we have so much power. And it doesn't seem like it, because I know when we talk about power, we're talking about it's different kind of powers, right? It's the power of those who rule the world, and it's the power that rules self, and that self has the ability to rule all of existence. But when you got that kind of power, you know, and you don't have any power over anything outside, uh, Pop said in the video, who was talking at InvestFest, he said, what happens is, is that, you know, because you don't have any power at all, you start abusing your woman. Because that's the only thing you have control over. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And so the black man is faced with this crisis of knowing, of this feeling, man, I'm powerful, but I have no power over things. So then he looks for something to have power over. Mm -hmm. This black woman is right there in his vicinity. Mm -hmm. So now he doesn't, he, 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 and if you don't have a righteous mind, you're going to a what? Abuse that power. I grew up seeing men abuse power. Wasn't the white man that told them to abuse power? That perhaps it was the systems and slavery and all of the things that we can qualify, but now we at this point to say, well, listen, you know, I've been in meetings where brothers talked about the white man, but then they were the ones abusing the power on the inside because of ego and narcissism and flaws and all sort of detriments within the character. So seeing that, I didn't condemn them or judge them, I empathize. You understand me? Because that brother must not have seen what true power was. And true power is discipline. Right? But how you get disciplined is you have to make yourself a disciple of something that you want to be like. Right? So you try to get in line with that which you want to become and that helps you maintain your discipline. You understand me? But we don't have discipline and we lack integrity. We don't have integrity because we allow ourselves to be assimilated into every culture in the world. Your integrity, right, we all have a certain germ integrity. You understand me? And then when we introduce to something else, it starts to mess with our physiology, right? We allow everybody to come in contact with us and it starts to throw off our integrity, our field, our aura. No. You have to be in environments that stimulate the integrity of who you are. So you have to be around people who think like you, who dream like you, who vision like you, who move like you, because you all reinforce the integrity of the things you made of. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So when they started making handshakes, they start changing the integrity of the people on a biological level just by touching them. I'm not even, whoa, strangers from another land start touching hands. Handshake. You messing with the integrity. A man really ain't supposed to, supposed to give your woman a handshake. Right. Don't need to give your woman the hug. Why? Right. Because right. you're sharing integrity. Right. Now, you're sharing energy. You understand me? That integrity that you built at the household is now being lost because she's going to the workplace. She's dealing with friends and things of that That's nature. Right. And now the integrity and that energy is being mixed. And then you bring that back into the household. Wait a minute. That's not what we was building in here. Mm -hmm. Something is off a little bit. You talking to a friend that's giving you ideas that have nothing to do with the foundation of what we that's building. Right. The integrity is now off. It's the substance of, of, of what things are made of. When you look at any building, once the beams collapse because the integrity is broken, it doesn't have anything to stand on. But we've lost the art of companionship. We lost the art of of family and relationship. So we think everything is connected to all insecurity. That's what they tell you. You understand me? No, this is a science that you don't want to deal with no more. Right? Because it comes with responsibility. You know? Think about, you know, when, when, uh, when you want to become anything, study that what you want to become. I'm going to give you a key. If man wants to become a faithful man, you have to study faithfulness, integrity, and discipline. These are the things that I have to study for myself. Being a high value man. <laughs> you got to study it because what your brain starts to do when you're studying the things that you want to become better at, you automatically start to believe that's what you are. You start to subconsciously put it in there because now that's the information you act off of in order to become that which you want to be. But we have things that we desire to become, but we don't study it. So now we're not adding that into our integrity so we don't have anything to pull from. 
My father told me one time I'm working at a job and I'm trying to figure out how to get along with these people because I used to say I was the greatest salesman in the world. <laughs> you understand me? I'm telling you, man. I can sell dry the air. It was different. So what was happening is I was selling so good that the people around me was getting jealous. They was mad. I'm like, well, I didn't come here to make friends. I came here to make ends. I called Pops one day. I said, Pops, man, what am I supposed to do, man? I'm too good. You understand me? I'm trying to figure out how to get along with these people. He said, brother, be up for a while. Now, during the time, I said, damn, man, that's it. I, I, I thought he was being short with me. But when I, <laughs> I, I, was like, I don't ever call for advice. <laughs> but then I thought about it. I said, wait a minute. What's my foundation? I got training. The training went back to the proper handling of people. Right? So... If as a FOI and as a Muslim I'm taught to be righteous, then I had to empathize with them. How can I do good for them to do good for me? If I treat them better, then they treat me better. So I said, let me teach them what I know. You understand me? They can never be me, but now at least they can be better versions of themselves and they can appreciate me for teaching them. Teach. It changed the condition of the environment just by being a better person to the people that was around me. And if I didn't have a foundation, right, and I wasn't strong enough, I wouldn't have had the integrity, you understand me, to move accordingly to how I'm supposed to move in that environment. Because I was operating from a place of ego, not trying to operate within the, in the eco, which is the ecosystem of how all these things get along, how black men and women, how the human family on this planet Earth get along. Mm. So we have to get back to a place of, number one, asking ourselves, what am I made of? What is my integrity? When I go out in the world, what is the substances that I come in contact with that is not part of my integrity that I then have to detox from so I can consistently get back right to my organic self? That is the key that if you master that, you will live life untouched, unscathed, unmoved. You understand me? And whether you're going into an industry, whether you're going into a job, whether you're going into a relationship, Nothing would transform your integrity because you will not allow things that are not supposed to mix in with you. That's the idea of being in the world, but not of the world. You did? I wanted to bring this cipher together for this reason, man, because you get to build, all right? I imagine people that watch this of uh, varying degrees of philosophies, beliefs, backgrounds, a lot of things, some things may trigger you. Some things may make you feel a certain way. Some things may make you say, well, I agree, I disagree. Some things, some people are so triggered, they don't like men to even speak. You understand me? And that's their problem. <laughs> like, we ain't even supposed to have a, a voice and an opinion. And the thing about what we do here is we don't give a damn about that. I don't care how you feel about the amount of space I'm supposed to take, the things I'm supposed to say it a certain way so it qualifies so that the algorithm of the world that's being built out that does not include the constitution of still me showing up as a ruler and a man with power ever since this country was created it never respected you understand me my body it never respected my mind never respected my power you understand me and until today on Instagram a man speaks and gives his opinion his perspective his philosophy See, let me tell you what the most dangerous thing is, is what we lost in society is philosophy. See, philosophy is the art of thinking. Philosophy is evidence without scientific measurement because man discovered everything just by thinking before there were tools to give factual data and evidence to say that that's real. We knew atoms existed. We knew of galaxies and stars beyond. We knew that our body had cellular structures. How did we know this? We think because we already tapped into all. So just by using our mind, now, you know, the esoterics is things that are not, they're not proven by religion or science but more so the interpretation of religion and science. Because science is always disproving itself every day. And religion is interpreted by whoever tells the story or whoever has the capability of consciousness to go down in there and break it and say this is what it means. So you got to get to a point now where every man should have a philosophy in life. You understand me? You don't have a philosophy towards life. So, but they, 
get us away from having philosophies because then you start to have ideas that rule the world. You start to discover things that they didn't teach you about. Now they can't control what you believe. So there was a, a time and day when men talk about their philosophies and their ideas towards life and they'd be killed for it. There was a time when women studied medicine and, and alchemy and they were killed for it, blamed as witches, because people did not understand. So that which people can't see, they call you crazy for, but that's just what you know that they see not. So you have to develop a philosophy, you have to develop principles, you have to develop framework, right? And you can't worry about the world believing or knowing you because we know we live in a matrix and we got to break free from that every single day because it's throwing us back in there. Oh, you think you breaking free? Let me remind you, you in this. The algorithm is set so it controls your way of thinking and speaking. Well, damn, if I say this, then I get banned. So now I have to say it like this. So now it's forcing you to move and navigate and mold your thoughts. So now you would never speak as true of words that you would ever speak because of an algorithm, of an uh, AI. And who built that algorithm? <laughs> who built it? AI has built-in biases based on whoever is the coder and the engineer of it. You understand me? So we are living in a world that is manufactured. I'm going to leave us with this. You have the A. You have the I. A, numerical value, one. I, numerical value, nine. The 19 represents male. That represents female. This represents consciousness, right? This represents feeling. This is consciousness as well, or I would say, let's say logic. Consciousness. She represents the subconscious, the womb, right? Anyway. But what does that represent? What do these two do when they come together? See, there's a thing that is divine mathematics. When they say you add one plus one, it equals two. You understand me? But when you got the one and the female is the nine, right, what they do? They come, they create the 10, it brings it back down to the one. That represents God. The family represents God because truly what they do is when one plus one comes together, you understand me, you don't create two. When it comes to the family, one plus one is going to equal three, right? Because it's no longer individuals, it's about the collective. Mm. You did? If we said what two individuals come together, that's two people. No, when you're talking about family, these two individuals plus this one individual make three. That's the family. That's the trifecta. That's the holy trinity. Pyramid. That's the beginning. So that one plus that nine, that represents God. That represents birth of thought. That represents beginning and ending. That represents all truth. As I showed you all those ones, that's all the data in the universe. Now, if you're not an original man, you're not tapped into that one and that nine. So what do you have to do? You have to create artificial systems, right? So now, if you don't have the numbers, you can't keep up with the birth, you go create AI. What's the most dangerous AIs? I talked about these before, artificial intelligence, right? They use that three to What's the other AI? Artificial ingredients. Uh-oh, we're getting dangerous now. What's the other AI? Artificial insemination. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They manufacture in the womb, huh? What are they trying to do? They're trying to play God. They're trying to play God. See, this is you on the original one in the nine. You ain't got no problem with your swimming. You ain't got no problem giving life. You are the original man. This is the original balance. But see, in they world, let me tell you why they world is in balance. I guess they keys on you. You went crazy. You doing too much. You know what I'm saying? They world is in balance because when you go to Greek, you go to Roman history. This is the man. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Right? What he values next in his hierarchy is the boy. The boy is the one as well. Then the last is his woman. Mm. Right? The African system, man, woman. You understand me? Now, he only believes that she has value if she creates him one of these. Mm. You understand me? So she is only, her value is only viewed on her ability to create a male. That is the white patriarchal paradigm of thinking. Mm. That's the one that the woman wants to destroy. Mm. Now, he, right, is producing less babies now. Right, so now, he's in what I call the 911. You understand me? He in this emergency. <laughs> you understand me? What happened on 9-11? Come on now, what happened on what was 9-11, the biggest paradigm shift? 9-11, an old emergency. 19 years later, what happened? Oh, C-19. Uh-oh. Come on now. Hey, I'm trying to give y'all the codes. You have to understand that there's a mathematical fabric and when you are able to tap in and understand the number systems, the numbers speak because numbers are the original words. You understand me? Everything is mathematical. You can describe the universe by the number. You understand me? So he, what did he do? You understand me? He's in this emergency paradigm. He put the woman up front. He got everybody thinking emotional right now. You understand me? When you fractic, you emotional. You're not thinking logical. The world is not thinking logical. If you think about what's going on in the world, it is not a logical 19 system. You understand me? We are not filtering, right? We, we got logical thought, then we got emotions. No, right now we have emotions, then logical thought. It's not, that's what's ruining, running the world. So we are in an emergency paradigm that's going on. And this is why the world is ending. Because if we get back to where the boys are thinking logical again, you understand me? And they, 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 they you know, now I, I believe they got these, what I call the nine minds. They thinking feminine, right? They illogical, these are nine one minds. They afraid of that logic right there. You understand me? They don't want to think like what? A man. They don't want to learn how to control and rule their mind. They want to learn how to control and just tap Shit, into yeah, no. their feelings. They don't want to think like a man. You said a man. Amen. What we said in the prayer. Amen. Like Amen. Amen. You understand me? Amen. So once you understand what you're seeing and what's going on, what the how many and I ain't gonna get too deep with it. After I got deep with it. <laughs> but because it, it, there's there's a lot more to to go into when you study that. The honorable or no masterful art of Muhammad. He talked about, he said there's 17 million original people plus the 2 million Native Americans. He said that represents the 19 million rusty locks. Oh man, what's that rusty lock? It's all of that lost found potential that we see out every day. Man not being able to tap into what? His mind. Not being able to control his mind. Not being able to take thoughts, right? And then give birth. What are we talking about? We got what? When you look in the universe, you got the sun. Then around it, you have the nine, right? The nine planets. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the feminine. You understand me? So you have to understand that all things act in cosmic order. You dig? And you have to understand that people talk about astrology and astronomy. They're saying that there's different cycles where there's feminine that pulls. You understand me? But you have to be like the sun. You're not getting pulled by the planets. You're pulling them into your orbit. You dig? This is your one. This is your nine. They follow you. You don't follow them. You don't follow your emotions. No, that's your power right there. But what we're dealing with is this particular society don't know how to give birth to nothing. So they rusty lock minds. So how do you unlock those minds? You need what key? Ooh, what's that key? Key, key. Key or energy. Yang. Right? It's the same thing. Key or key yep. or chi. Chi gone. Right? Or key to unlock. You understand me? Once you unlock that mind, you can never be 
set to a place where you can be oppressed again because now you know. You understand me? Now I got control. I got knowledge yourself. So then you start to become so powerful because now you have the ability to say be and it is. Meaning I say be and it is. I give birth. You understand me? Now I don't procrastinate. Now I live in the now. Not tomorrow, not next, not next week, not maybe, not a little bit later. I only know now, right? So what we have to do, you understand me, is get back to the divine order. See, when we're good with our woman, that's the divine order right there. You understand me? We, we good right here. Ain't nothing out of order, nothing out of orbit. That's so why. we can't let them try to rule us. You understand me? All we have to do is get back to the mind of God. When you go into the Bible, into the Quran, into all of them, they gonna talk about that 19. The Quran says it's 19 over it. You understand me? Now I ain't gonna get too deep on that. So, but I just wanted you to all, uh, when you look at 444 or 333 or 222 or 111, it's called divine synchronicity. Each person is gonna take something different from it based on higher level consciousness or lower level consciousness. But I ask you a question. You know, you got your little sperm. You hit that egg. Moment of conception. You understand me? First, this is thought. But thought does not act into motion, right? Now the motion is being attracted to the womb. And what happened after them nine months? You understand me? That thought spirals. And in that nine months, what happened? It gives birth. So we have been taken away because the thing called fecundity, you know, it's talking about how many little sperms you got in there working going to that egg. What's fecundity? Fecundity is how many sperms you got going to that egg. The ones that's working, trying to give life. But it's not just here. You have fecundity in your mind, how many ideas that you have. You understand me? So remember, they had you enslaved, stealing your ideas. And you was over there making as many babies, having all the ideas, so they said that no, a slave can't patent an idea. You understand me? They were so cold that they said, wait a minute. There was one slave master, it was a, a brother who created a, um, he created a, a cotton picker. You understand me? Where, where it made it a little easy. Yeah, not the cotton gym, but it was a variation of it. So his, his master tried to go patent it, but they said, no, you can't patent nothing made by a Negro because they ain't considered him to be a human being. But he starts selling it anyway. And the devil was so cold that he said, see, and, and he was happy to say it was made by a Negro because what he said was, see, that this is proof that y'all said that slavery devotes their mind. Said, no, this is made by a Negro right here. Slavery ain't doing nothing to their mind. They still innovative. The devil used trichnology so cold that he stole something from us and then he used it as proof to the fact that slavery was still humane. You understand me? <laughs> so you have to understand the machinations of who you're dealing with. And ever since then, what we're dealing with in the industry now, his ability to control the bodies. You understand me? As long as he has power over this 19, he can control the world. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan kind of said the Million Man March, you understand me, in 1995, he opened it up with the secrets of the number 19, saying that when that one is next to that nine, there's something to be uncovered. Because he said, when you look at these statues, they're 19 feet high, representing the 16 and the third president. He said, what'd that come down to, 19? He was trying to get you the secret. When he had two million black men, he had the whole world in front of him. He was trying to give you the secret that it's your body. It's your mind that powers everything. There's no computers, there's no computer chips, no street lights, no nothing. He built this world using you. Now you have to learn how to use yourself.